Okay. Up and running smoothly. This week I'm going to use Deep Void. Not for the four hours though. Hey, Deviant. I'm good. How are you? All right. So, uh, this is the illustration block of uh, CG Spectrum's Twitch. I um, I am Eric Wilkerson. I'm uh, the digital illustration uh, mentor for CG Spectrum. And today I am going to continue my uh, drawing slash design slash digital painting of the Egyptian god set. And so uh, thank you for thank you for popping in for however long you'll you'll be here. Understand if somebody needs to grab lunch go to the movies or go for a long walk or something like that but you know stick around and maybe I won't screw up this painting incentive for anybody to hang out all right so uh so if if you haven't seen the previous videos uh, I started off by collaging together reference from a previous sculpture that I had done a concept art uh, sculpt sculpture that I had done for a different book cover illustration, and because I didn't have time to sculpt this reference in clay or in ZBrush, or that well, I technically I don't know ZBrush like that. I'm not a, a, a 3D modeler like that, so my skills. Brush kind of end with me poking around with it until the program crashes. It's happened a couple of times. Uh, so, uh, um, so I worked out this little comp. Got a neighbor's dog. Uh, shot reference of a neighbor's dog for the snout. Uh, the ear and the parts of the face, all of the face are just warped, stretched reference material from uh, painting I was, the sculpture I was telling you about. And, and this is the sculpture. So if you missed out, then you can always go back in and watch that that video where I am warping together photo reference of a sculpture for two hours and talking about how um, much I can't stand Man of Steel. The movie, not the character movie. So, uh, anyway. Eric, uh, did you see the new trailer, gameplay, and producer interview for the Little Nightmare 2 game? It's insane. No, um, I'm not up on I'm not up on the games like that. Uh, the last trailer I saw, honestly, I've been trying to follow what's been going on with that DC fandom convention or the online convention where they were showing the the new slate of games and stuff, movies and whatnot that's going to be coming out from DC, and I'm super pumped. Um, I watched the trailer for Gotham Knights from the from the creators of the Arkham series and I watched oh man uh the Suicide Squad game and they put Superman in it spoiler alert the so Superman's in the game and I guess the Suicide Squad has to try and kill Superman like good luck with that good luck with um, but the cruel thing is with some of these trailers is you think it's going to come out next year. 
and they taunt you with a game that's not coming out for another two years. So I, I guess I have to stay indoors and try not to, I don't know, trip down a flight of stairs or catch a bullet or something uh, so I can play Suicide Squad 2022. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and just paint this eye. I'm going to just like work within here and just block in all of my colors. Um, so the process that I'm doing right here <clears throat> is really more direct painting than anything because uh, my values were kind of worked out. My colors and all that stuff were manipulated in the photo comp stage, uh, which is to the left of my sketch. So I'm basically just going to be color sampling and trying to match or improve upon uh, the definitely improve upon comp that I put together for this piece. So uh, that's how I'm going to be spending the next two hours. Two hours? What? Painting an eye? Um, I, yeah. That's what's going to happen. And I'm going to eat my yogurt while I'm at it. So. I don't know if there's a Twitch rule about eating yogurt while you paint. Probably is. I'll find it. So I'm just going to be color picking directly from that reference. Squiggling, locking it. The character is going to have this cool blue, greenish kind of under light hitting pieces of skin. Because I want this ominous kind of glow, neon kind of glow coming from otherworldly. I don't remember what they call Egyptian under. I think I would know it from the amount of Stargate. I haven't quite rigged this up so that it figured out how to rig it. Show rush menu or the entire photo. I did figure out how to show. Yeah, Stargate was the was the she's awesome. You know I liked Stargate Universe probably more than all of them. Ah. Take that back. Forgot about it, Lane. What about the X Files? Uh, I don't know how old you are. Man, I'm getting some just buggy stuff going on. Photoshop. Wrap out on. This is why you should always have quality equipment, kids.
pardon me, while I scrape the dust out of my Wacom pen and blow it like a, a Nintendo cartridge. Hating myself. That works. <clears throat> Is embarrassing because it makes it look like my entire studio is just like or something. I do is remember to save your work. Bless you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I will. Well, I certainly will. Uh, so yeah, X Files. You want to talk about X Files? I'll talk. else do I have open that's causing this problem? All right, anyway, back to business. Uh, yeah, I liked, I liked X. I just, you know, my, my major. Did I, did I have any problems? I think I just liked. It. Good. It was. Good. I mean, for its time, I think that, been a lot of, copycats out. There's a show called The Chronicles that was similar. Chron. I don't know if that's a. Is that a from wherever whatever country you're in? Was that like a local thing? Because I I never heard of it. Issues. American, but less known. The only show, well, I know of. What were those guys called on X Files? Uh, sorry, I can paint and talk at this kind of thing. Those, those, it were those three guys that were always. With Mulder, like helping Mulder out, not always, but they ended up getting their own spin off show. You know what I'm talking about? The Lone Gunman. That, thank you. I would have never got that. Lone Gunman. I liked The Lone Gunman, and I liked. What was that other show? It was another X Files type of spin off. Millennium. Millennium? Yeah. thought that was pretty X Files was 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 great. I remember the 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 episode that I I watched. I think I had tried was trying to tape, tell my mom to watch the show was the one where they go to that that barn or that 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 house out in the out in the woods out in the country and those mutated dudes were they kept their mom on a cart underneath their bed. You know what I want? I'm talking you that that one. They only played it. They only aired it on TV once, and then you could never see it again unless you bought the VHS or waited for it to stream on on Netflix or something. But for years, they just banned it from television. That was the that was the introduction for number of people to to the show it really messed them up the 
feel like I need to restart my computer. I probably Photoshop. Then that would shut off the whole stream. So I'm just going to try to power through it. I, you said you saw that episode when you were nine, and that episode messed you up, you poor thing. Oh, yeah. You should have never been in that. without having these Even though I could sit here and then just paint over top of my photocomp, that's no fun because there's stuff in the photocomp that I would end up changing in the act in the final painting. Just more satisfying, sometimes easier to do the painting over my final line drawing than to try to touch up a digital photo collage. Oh no, I have never seen any of the Hellraiser films because I like to sleep. I enjoy it. It's a fun, it's a fun pastime. Fun fact about poltergeists, people think I'm messing around when I say it, but if you ever go to buy a house, talk to a realtor, you ask them if the, if the house is haunted, have to. Legally obligated to tell you the truth. Is this house built on ancient Indian burial ground? Yes or no? Have to answer. Try it out sometime. Some might look at you like you're crazy. Others might say, well, actually, but we, uh, we buried them properly. Respect. If somebody ever said that to me, I would just leave. No, they're lying. Checkmate! Uh, I will do you one better. Did you see the interview of the Poltergeist cast about the hauntings that took place? No, I did not. I did not know that that was a haunted set for real, for real. Aw, oh, man. Aw, oh, man. No, I will look that. Is that. Tell me that's on YouTube. And I will look it up. I will look it up. I promise you. That sounds. Sounds real. Messed up.
That's no good. That's no good. Yeah. Like, you can you imagine, like, you're a ghost. You're just, like, chilling in the afterworld or something like that. I don't know. Doing your thing. And somebody wants to make a movie out of you. And they're getting the facts wrong. They're getting it wrong. And you're just outraged. You start flipping out on the cast and crew. But you can't properly convey your message because you're dead. That's got to be frustrating. Hello, blasphemer, right on. So I'm not using any kind of fancy brush, just using a basic round. Uh, it's usually how I do all of my paintings because it's not really you can really get some nice varied effects with building up textures and stuff in your in your painting just playing with opacity blending the colors and all that stuff rather than trying to get fancy custom brush because in in oil paint I would be using a, a round brush filbert flat so I try to keep that consistent um, Deviant's asking have you seen the original Pet Cemetery films I saw the first one the one where uh, the one that Tashi Yar quit TNG for and uh, started and uh doggo is looking sick oh thanks yeah was she the aunt i don't know was she the aunt we didn't know no she was the mom wasn't she the mom of that kid and then that got hit by the truck look that movie was messed up so many levels. I really can't, really can't watch it. I can't think about it because it's so sad. Because I think if I that happened to one of my kids, I would probably be the first one up in that. Like, who wouldn't? Because technically, the parents or the people that put their loved ones in the pet cemetery weren't technically told, well, if you put them in there, come back and kill you. If they had just said that, it would have been like, it would have been a different story. Oh, the heads up. Thanks for the warning. No, they were just told, well, they come back different. Ow.
Yeah, she was the. Aunt was played by. No, I did not know that. Honestly, I probably sat through that movie with my eyes closed half the time, so there was probably a lot that I missed, and I'm not going back to. It was enough that I sat through. Probably, probably zoomed in. I think that I'm going to just paint this at a much, yeah, I was painting this at 100% zoom, meaning that this head is larger than life size on my Cintiq. So I don't need it to be near that large or spend that much time on the pull out bit and get a little bit looser with my brush handling the uh, application of the colors because otherwise I'll be rendering it I don't need all of that stuff Wait, the the aunt was played by a dude deliberately for psychological reason to induce a sense of slight uneasiness in the viewer. What? Well, thank you for uh, explaining to me why. That's just wrecked. Imagine somebody's just sitting. Back in the days, men had to play all feet. Oh, like the Shakespeare. Well, yeah. Yeah. There was a... Uh, if you watch the, the live-action Beauty and the Beast movie that came out recently, the, there's the, the, the attack scene for the end of the film where the giant dresser Attacks these like three musketeers dudes, puts them in women's clothing. Two of them freak out, and then one of them smiles and walks off. Had to be like one of the most hilarious. And I know that was in the original. Well, it all three of them screamed and ran off in the original cartoon, but they twisted it for the live action film. And I just thought it was such a beautiful nod, but hilarious at the same time. Hi, uh, I'm not going to try and butcher your name, but, and Choli, thanks, thank you. It's well worth watching the, uh, the live action beauties. I think they, I mean, some of the, it's, it's like shot for shot, just really beautifully done. Um, highly recommend. Checking it out.
Ooh, it has been. Thank you, man. That's a. Uh, that's you know. That's like friends don't let friends drive drunk. Dreamers don't let the artists not save. Sheet. One time I was using a uh, outdated, well, I was using a old version of Corel Painter. And the program was like really unstable. I got up to go fix myself. Came back and the program had crashed. There's no warning, no auto backup, what I had been working on for probably an hour, maybe over an hour, just gone. So, well, let me, let me just learn how to do, I don't want that to happen to me. Sure, it's stable, or Yeah, it's 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 a scary thing. It's a scary thing. You you kind of think, oh, I paid all this money for this program, it should work, right? Hope for life for. I have not. I can I can clearly see the the box cover art. Uh. But I have not. I feel like it's like eighties. Feel like it's like an eighties B movie sci fi. Not seen. Wait, so that's not, is that different from species? This sounds like the description for species. Henderson? Henderson? Asha Hendricks. Wouldn't be surprised if it. Something inspired by. Seem to be a lot of copycat movies. Species and life force are very similar. I want these like really nice dark in set. Eyes here. Probably gonna change the brush in a second. 
type of brand. I'll, uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not much of a horror movie guy because when I, I grew up back in a time when there was a certain time of night when you shouldn't be watching HBO and all the all the really scary stuff like HBO would just become horror movies after a certain time of night. And that's when they would play Creep Show and all the werewolf movies and all that stuff. I just remember cousins. I was probably really young, and my cousins, there was some kind of tra werewolf transformation scene, and my cousins saw me covering my eyes and they pulled my arms away from my face and made me watch it. So, yeah. Hellraiser? Nope. I think I bowed out at Freddy Krueger movies because after a while you're kind of just like All right, this is just getting silly how many people in the town how many how many how many more people does he have to get burning them telling me like the entire the entire city came out and burned him He's got to kill all these kids. All of them? There wasn't one family that stayed home that night when Freddy got burned up. Sitting here. God, Jesus. Nah, I got to kill them all. <laughs> Just to be sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, plus it's it's not like Freddy's got anything else to do, right? <laughs> he could knit a new sweater. I mean, he's got all the hardware. But who's got time for that? There's kids to kill. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, you didn't bother to ask me, Eric, have you seen season three of Babylon 5? No, you went straight to Slither. Have you seen Slither? Nope. Nope, no, I haven't. Wait, is that the one with the giant roaches? Or is that... What's the one with the giant roaches? Pretty sure you've seen it though. Mimic. Mimic. Giant. I've seen them. I feel like they did sequels. I mean, some of this stuff, I feel like, what, what, what more did to say? Giant roaches, giant roaches. Everywhere. Back to you in the story.
I mean, which version? Are we talking about the one with uh, Donald Sutherland? Are we talking about black and white version? Talking about the one with uh, Daniel Craig? And they keep remaking that. They re feel like they remake Body Snatchers more than Batman movies. Any of them. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. I think I, I kind of bowed out. I think I bowed out after whatever version was in the I just after a while it's like if it's the same thing if it's the same exact story I kind of bow out Ooh. Not you're not touching new ground here nothing to say Like, I'm not opposed to horror films. It's just, I need to sleep it. I'm too grown to be sitting up. You know, Stranger Things messed me up. All right? With the, with the, what's that thing called? The, the Billy Gorkin? The Demi, Demi Guard? Demi Gorkin? Whatever. Pushing through the wall of their, of the, of the house. Oh. Oh, man grown man in that <laughs> yeah demi Gor gorgon yep like nope i'd be the one that just fainted in the house and they'd be like what do we do with eric leave him <laughs> just leave him he'd step over me and just roll out what was that girl's name that was sitting on the in the pool and then Stranger Things. Remember, I can't remember. She was just she just disappeared. The Demi Gorgon ate her. Death. Throwaway character. But Twilight Zone, the original? Yeah. That show was so good. I kind of, for, for a time, I kind of based who I wanted to associate myself with based on if they had seen Twilight Zone or would watch it with. Because it was so good. Don't do that. What do you mean you've never seen Twilight Zone? There's a TV series they made before the Twilight Zone, but was based on true paranormal. Oh, I'm sure that. It's not enough. Mess them up and let It's true. Wetness eye going here.
called One Step Beyond. So before, all right, I, 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 see, I, I see that and I raise you this one. There is a, there's a, before television, there were radio dramas and there was one called, um, oh, and on the spot, I can't remember the name. I, I, I listened to it on Spotify. And if it weren't illegal, play radio drama. Oh, it was called X minus one. It was um, an NBC radio drama. So it was like predates uh, Twilight Zone by, I don't know, decade or so. Whatever black and white TV. Listen, there's a documentary, not a documentary, there's a radio podcast that talks about the history of the War of the World, of the War of the World's uh, 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 broadcast. If you've, have you heard, have you listened to the original War of the World's broadcast? It's incredibly messed up. And did you also know that Orson Welles and his entire cast were brought up on charges of terrorism? <laughs> they had to go before Congress and explain themselves, which I just thought was amazing. <laughs> it's like, of course you knew that. Um, so there's uh, what is the show it's on um npr radio lab so radio lab did a uh a, a little narrative uh, little documentary on the history of that broadcast and the fact that they re recreated it they redid it twice they did it in the 80s in Boston, not Boston, in Buffalo, New York. And uh, then they did another one in, I think it was in South America. And then the one in South America uh, ended up with people dying. It was really messed up, but it's worth, it's worth listening to. Okay, you got one better? Hit me. Oh, you mentioned it, but the mod doesn't lie. Okay. Yeah. Got to keep it PG, man. Got to keep it PG. Shut it down. Yes. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. You have to keep that one to yourself. <laughs> I don't even know what the... 
uh I I'm I think I'm 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 good. I I looked up the the raccoon dogs and all that stuff. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds messed. Um. Uh, I, I don't know how much more of your description of this film the odds are going to allow, so probably have to change the topic to something. So tell me, what was your favorite Twilight Zone episode? You have one. See if I know five seasons. I feel like we're in a Twilight Zone, so like I just don't know if we're on the fringes, on the outskirts, in the center, in the bowels. Or on the fringes <laughs> of the Twilight Zone. But we're definitely in there. Dancing around. Even you're saying your favorite one is the one where they had been abducted and sees people with pig snouts. Ah, okay. That's a solid one. I remember that. Um, 
I have a few favorites, but I think my the one I think about sometimes I think about the one with uh, Burgess Meredith, which isn't a couple, uh, where he's in the bank vault when the bomb goes off, and he's got like time to read books and stuff. Yes, I've seen Outer Limits, the original or the remake from the '90s. Probably both. I've seen both. Apparently, I did nothing raw TV. I've seen every random episodes of Love Boat. Yeah, the original's good. Didn't get enough. Didn't get enough play. Everybody's all about Twilight. Some messed up stuff that. But a lot of that stuff is 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 like um adaptations of some really good short stories. So that stuff is out there. Um I I never did. I never got into it because I didn't understand what I was watching. And I wish I had because everybody tells me it was great. But I didn't get it. Kind of like Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Never got it. Never understood what the hell. Uh, some of those shows were kind of just, I don't know, maybe it's an age thing. After a certain age, brain doesn't pick up the frequency that makes me. It just becomes noise. Not like rock music at a certain age. It's like, turn that mess off. Back in my day, music used to be music. Air Bear Bunch. I don't know what what country you're watching some of this stuff. I never heard of Hair Bear Bunch. Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network in the nineties. Me, I only watched. I to but some of it doesn't hold up as much. I don't think it holds up as well. I thought it did. Um. I just I. I think about I think about that show Powerpuff Girls. I think Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls. There's there's been there's episodes and they, they actually make fun of it. There's episodes where Powerpuff Girls just beat the crap out of anybody. They Mojo Jojo would be on his day off, minding his own business. In a bathrobe, sipping coffee, just chilling, reading the newspaper. They bust in hit through his wall and beat the crap out of him. 
He has no idea why. That's like a that was dope. I I swear to you, there's a YouTube clip. I would find it right. It's like you know what you did, Mojo Jojo. Don't know what I did if I did. I did. <laughs> you know how he would talk. Uh, and that's the show is Jack. Show. Have I seen Green Inferno? I have not. I feel like I'm failing you, man. Sorry. Thanks. Put on. Have you seen Dante's Inferno? That was performed by the band Andrean Dream. Dante's Inferno. Dante the the movie Dante's Inferno. With uh. Brosnan, James Bond dude, like Dante's. And you know, movie. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. There's a, there's a painting. Painting. I remember. Oh, you guys had asked me if I if I if I'm playing any. I do like I'm playing uh Star Wars Fall in Order game and for some reason I feel like the actor that is playing the character, the playable character, the game, uh is the same dude that plays it character from the movie from, from the from the new dream it remake i don't know something about his face looks weird to me i feel like i've seen it it's a it's a good game it's a good game gotham series right right so he played joker right or or whatever Whatever they call the Joker show. Right. I could have sworn he was also it. I never seen the it film, so I don't know if they just call him it. Clown, he was the clown, right? Jerome Sith. It's a lot. Stunning. No, I have not. Who who did the illustrations for
find out. So well, like well known as in like golden age. Parents lost. Gustav Dor, right? Uh, interesting. Hmm. I should know this. I feel like I should know. I've seen some of these. Never put it together that. I have to come back and. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. I welcome. I swallow calm. XD. Hi. Yeah, Gustav Dore. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, So, uh, if anybody has any kind of uh, paint specific questions, or... some Sean. What's up? Now it's a party. Am I doing any comic? projects now no i don't i don't do i don't do i i juggle i juggle the occasional i don't i don't do that's hard work man hey sean i uh that, that is that is some seriously hard and I have a, so much respect for comic book artists they have to be their stuff has to be like every single page every single panel is its own little story every own little narrative moment narrative illustration they have to do that in a sequential way move you through a page all the way from cover to cover monthly this is exhausting but i love it I love what they do and so much respect for that if you don't you don't do you don't do comic book art because it's hope to be 
Jim Lee or something. Like, I remember when, this is dates me, I remember when Image, Image, Image Comics was formed. I remember when Wetworks, the comic book with that, Will Spertasio. You guys familiar with Image Comics and Wetworks? I am, I am, I am. A, a gentleman does never tells his age. I am old enough to know that you cannot be contra without the code. Physically impossible. That's how old I am. That helps. Narrow it down. And I am old enough to know that that code is actually spoken in. Um, wreck it ralph and i was the only one that was the only adult in the entire movie theater that laughed because i got it nobody else just went Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff going on in, in comics and it eventually ends up inspiring what ends up happening mainstream stuff and then but the indie stuff doesn't get the credit we did it first and nobody cared zarama wasn't all up on us whatever magazine talking about comics they wouldn't care until marvel tried Some really good stuff going Oh yeah, I, I I thank you. I I am I am really young. I'm just very now. World. If if Jeopardy had a a show, just for just useless pop culture trivia, I would clean. I think I would make it. I think I would make it to like the quarterfinals. Honestly, I'm not even bragging. I'm just stating facts. Alex Trebek would just look at me and you have done nothing with your life. All of this. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm trying to get that dog fur kind of texture to it without going nuts uh because i want some of that cool color from the from the sky around her and i mean this is meant to be impressionistic I'm not I'm not trying to be up on this kind of super detail but still want it to still want it to look good from it
talking. Figured I would bypass the full block in issue guy. Let's go. I gotta come finish blocking in shape. Values right. I don't read a lot of comic books, mainly because of time issues. I've got a whole uh, comicsology account for. Oh, you know what? There was a comic book I picked up. Oh man, it's really good. Uh, it's from. It's a, like a, it's a smaller indie publisher. T. You only wanted to say I like Mobius comics. Have you guys? I was bragging about this and showing it off to one of my students like a month ago. Uh, this big Meta Barons uh, box set, like all of Mobius's stuff. Uh, oh wait, no, it's not. It's, it's um, Drudowski and Menes. It's incredible, incredible work. Um, beautiful stuff. I think that they only made like a thousand copies of this. And uh, it's from Humanoids Publishing. I think there was like the definitive edition. Uh, There's only like a thousand copies of this ever made. And I think it sold out maybe few hours after I bought mine but it was kind of the one of those things where you see the link right before you go to bed and be like I I gotta go back Pick myself. yes I'm bragging and I and I'm I'm bragging so that it's saved per for posterity for years to come that I got the meta bearings book and you didn't oh snap <laughs> what's the meta barons about you know what i honestly don't even have any idea i bought it <laughs> unwrapped it took it out of the box unwrapped it and it's just sat here next to me for months i haven't even bothered to read it the only reason i know anything about meta barons is because a comic book artist named Travis Charest, uh was supposed to have done a, a Meta Barons comic, but it never, from, from my understanding, it never came out because he never finished it. But, but like a lot of that stuff was teased online. Um, oh, thank you. Save the work. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, man. See, I've got to get as good as Brandon uh, does where he looks into the camera and conveys messages to the audience by looking dead at you like this. I'm looking at my second monitor where I can see the conversations and at my screen, but it feels weird to look at my camera because I'm just seeing myself uh, in my little flipped up LED, LCD screen, chatting. I mean, Sean, you can add it to the list. See if Amazon still got it. I don't know if the book's still in print, honestly. Uh, they made it sound like, you don't buy it now, you're a chump. Oh, I'm no chump. I'll go buy it right now. Then never read it. 
blow the dust off of it. This is fun stuff though. Fun stuff. Just to get to sit and chat with. So uh I know you guys, some of you are are, are students at Siege Spectrum and others are kinda on the fence or something, but like what do you what kind of work are you making right now? What kind of stuff do you what are you working on right now? At this very moment? Well like for whatever what kind of artwork are you doing? Goes out to anybody watching. Assignments? What kind of what kind of assignment are you? I don't know if specific. What what are you doing for? You? I know because everybody is. Eric is secretly a superhero with amazing concept art. Oh. Making a game with Blizzard and collabing with people at Avalanche. Also my personal comic project. I mean, he might not. Um, I don't want to chase away audience, but I have a secret to tell you guys. I've never played anything from Blizzard. Warcraft. What is that show? What is that game? Overwatch? None of it. Is that is that a thing? Is that from Blizzard or is that from Riot? Oh god, I don't know. What company put Overwatch out? Is that Warcraft is Blizzard and Overwatch is from where? Where? <laughs> Blizzard as well. Okay. I don't know why I thought so. Okay, so League of Legends is Riot. League of Legends, I think. Oh, that's funny. All right, I got a story for you guys. So a friend of mine I used to work with, she used to work at Riot. I went to visit her at Riot in Santa Monica six years ago. She gave me the full tour of the facility. Got to meet a ton of people. Um, when I was when I was like giving getting this this tour, and I even saved my visitor badge. From when I went to visit them, it was November 14th, 2013, and my daughter ripped up my badge. It's like, I had my face in my, she just, it had been sitting in my, a pocket of my little iPad cover for years, and then she just ripped it. So, uh, but anyway, so I'm walking around in Riot's offices, like getting the full grand tour of everything, and I'm meeting like all these artists and concept illustrators and stuff, and like some people are at their desk playing video games, other people are watching Netflix on dual monitors while they're painting or animating or whatever, like real casual, and. Uh, so she introduces me to somebody. I think he asks, 
So what's your favorite thing about League of Legends or LOL? They they don't call they don't say League of Legends. They don't it's it's like mouthy a lot of words through the course of a day saying. But he says, What do you like best about LOL? And my friend goes that inter- that brought me in, she she, she says Oh, Eric doesn't play League of Legends, and I swear you could have heard a pin drop. The whole room kind of just stopped. So, it, I just thought that was pretty funny. And after that, it was kind of like, well, why is he here? He doesn't play. We're all about. Yeah, I was in, yeah, Sean, in Riot Games. Um, now those, uh, what do they call it? The uh, passive. Well, you, you're asking Brandon about uh, Crash Bandicoot stuff. So, yeah, I'm like anybody that's been doing this long enough has got so many stories that they could probably really only safely tell you over drinks at a convention. Like they would never sit online and tell you like, well, this is what such and such creative director at such and such company said to me, like in an online video, because that's that would just be. <laughs> but um I just thought it was pretty funny because I wasn't actively trying to apply for a job or look for a um <clears throat> at Riot and I just remember coming away thinking well they're really serious about you. you've got to know the product and I a concept artist friend of mine back when I was just starting out I remember him telling me <clears throat> we had a long conversation about it and he said don't apply to a studio that doesn't do the kind of work that you like don't just apply if you see a com- if you see a company that only makes race car games they're looking for a- or an illustrator you got to ask yourself how do you do you want to illust- do illustrations for race car games or did you want to do like fantasy sci-fi robot mecha demon monster hordes kind of stuff because if that studio if that branch of like ea games or studio only making race car games or jet pack jet bike type games then that's what you're going to be doing every day and I kind of feel like he was speaking from experience and was trying trying to warn me. Uh, so I thought that was really, really valuable advice. <clears throat> but you also don't want to hold out for the dream job either. If somebody's got work and you're able to do that work, then take the job. And if you realize... God, this sucks. Bounce. Another one. But, you know, you'd be in a better position to find another job once you've got something on your resume. That, yes. Uh, I was good looking enough for the studio to hire me. Talented. I'm willing to. Brazil or Rome or. Texas work
Yeah, Sean. Yeah, it's. I mean, it. It's a. It is a wise. It's a. It's. It's. It's good advice. Um. Well, <clears throat> if if you're ever having problems with sitting in front of a screen for for too long. Uh, or are you feeling like it it's depressing you for some reason or another? It might be a good thing to step away from uh, step away from your computer for a few hours, even a few days, or get better lighting in your in your studio or in your, in your workspace because the light the amount of light that you have in your space can have a psychological effect on you. Bright, well illuminated room, uh, or you have access to window light or something like that, that's different. It's, uh, it, well, it can have a, it can make your eyes feel tired, especially if you're in a dark room for too long, your eyes can feel tired. Or it can play with your brain and make your brain feel like it's time to rest because you're you're not it's it messes with you because you're really not supposed to be in a dark environment in your waking hours for extended periods of time. Um, so. But, you know, that's just my. From what I. Experience. I'll take breaks. I will. Try to go for a walk. Try to get out. Try to do something else. Besides just sit in front. Out. Oh, you have to get around and move. So I know this this process kind of goes against some of the stuff that people might be taught about building up values, having a separate layers, shadows, highlights, and all that. Kind of just baking this all one one layer, direct paint. That way I can smush things around as I want to. Thanks, man. It's, it's fun to just sit here and just... But also, like, to see... To see the differences between reference and the final. Oh, right. Phew. Get this. I hope so. I hope so. This... This piece will look awesome when it's finished. I hope so. I'll just play with it. Uh, I'll play with it a little, for a little longer. Get it, get it right. So I'm gonna go with like a gold-ish. Uh, look for the for the. And go for like a gold armor helmet head headdress here.
don't want. Plain filler rate filling up these filling up these shapes. Yeah, I saved. I saved a minute ago. Good. Thanks. Thank you for looking out. While I was trying to design the helmet, thinking about the design of the helmet, I started panicking, thinking, oh my god, am I drawn Shredder's helmet? And then for a while, it was all I could see. Sh Shredder. Ah! You know? And I, then, I, then I calmed myself down and said, no. Shredder's got a full face mask. Shredder's helmet design is technically just a samurai's helmet. Um, it's only just cheese grated. Um, so I kind of relaxed. Hey man, I'm glad you guys like the show or like the the stream. Um, tell your friends. I mean, when you woke up this morning, did you think that you would be staring at dog snout on a on a on a on your computer screen? That you didn't. That you did. I brought that to you. Welcome. I would I would sing it like Maui, but I feel like my phone would ring. Some Disney lawyer saying, "Stop it! Stop it right now!" <laughs> so when you're if you're ever doing a digital painting, sometimes it's, I like to work from background to foreground, and sometimes it's nice to um, build up your colors in a lower opacity, because that way you can let the background color kind of bleed through your strokes, so you don't have to work as hard uh, to get the result that you want. Kind of just let that that lighter opacity or that, that background shine tint skin same harmonious give it that same harmonious like an oil paint it would be equivalent of glazing over area or like with thin paint so that you have a translucent paint something that dry I mean if we have any
Yeah, we're we're good. We're in good shape. We're uh everybody's good. There was really never I want to try and go for a little bit of some color variation. Skin. Or. Palette. Because like doing doing this rough paint. Lock in. Gives me something that I didn't have in. Consistency to the to the paint I don't have in my photo bashed comp. So sit here often look back at dog reference see how I want it off. Also throw my Oompa Loompa Turn that form. Do I do photography? I do, but I am I'm not a I'm not a photographer. I, I shoot reference for take pictures of my oil paintings. Uh I shoot reference, you know, or I shoot photo for reference purposes really only. Uh I don't have the eye to to do beautifully composed photos. I don't see the world. I can just look through. Oh, isn't that a wonderful, a wonderful shot? It, I get okay shooting my shooting reference for sculptures and things. You took some Polaroid photos of graffiti. Cool. I didn't even know Polaroid was still making film. Polaroids. I guess they are. The thing. Back. Back. Yeah. Yeah, it's archaic, isn't it? I mean, you have to wait for a photo to appear? <laughs> Neat. A friend of mine posted a question on Facebook earlier today. I'll ask you guys. Willow or the never-ending story? You can only have one. You can only choose one. Which do you choose? I swear. Somebody says, what's the never-ending story? Hang up on all. What's Willow? All right, this stream is over.
actually technically it is over farewell <laughs> what's willow oh man you're killing me <laughs> you're killing my heart um it is a 1980s fantasy film with uh warwick davis the actor that played wicket in return of the jedi I've never heard of either of them. I'm going to break your heart. Oh, my. Here go. Okay. So, homework assignment for this week, class. Um, you need to educate yourselves on two of the greatest fantasy movies of all time. Uh, yeah. The book version? Man. I, I I was I was probably like my mid thirties before I ever even knew that there was a book version of the never ending story. I would have just sworn it was just a movie. Add it to the list. Good. You add that to the list. I swear, like when you guys watch Family Guy, do half the jokes just go over your head? Because <laughs> There, there's so many nods to the 1980s. To yeah, in the U.S., the movie is super popular for some reason. Uh for the most important reason because it traumatized the youth. There's a scene in the Neverending Story that is like traumatic and should probably have not, probably not it should have should have probably not been seen by children probably under the age of i don't know 12 and uh yeah we all got subjected to it so i'm subjecting you to it so i haven't seen that weird dog dragon thing oh man yeah Oh the oh the uh oh the the luck dragon yeah 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 the luck dragon yeah uh highly recommend it uh really good film will enjoy it maybe you will enjoy it if you have good I'll say it. yes 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 a thousand times yes. Um, so I think that's about all I'm going to get done today. Um, I'll probably have, probably block in a little bit more of it. I'm going to finish it off. Probably start something new next week. I don't know. Probably post something in the description. Class. I don't know if it'll probably be. An alien. I know I was supposed to do an alien this one, but I went description. Bag pus. Nah, man. Nah, man. I'm not I'm not looking up any more of those strange creepy foreign animal deals that I didn't know about or didn't know existed. I'm good. I'm going to type in bag bag puss and then like my Google operatives are going to come knocking at my door. Oh, it's for children. Okay, good. All right. Something clean. All right. Uh <laughs> So thank you guys for for coming out and uh I will I'll chat with you all later. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me company uh while I uh try to power through painting this. It's always good to have somebody to talk to while I'm, uh, while I'm doing it. So cool beans. I will uh chat with you all later. <laughs>